talked earlier about it, Jeff, about what you've been involved in in terms of the social media. Um, how do you think technology has changed the way that businesses market their services these days? How has that really moved businesses across and what new opportunities are there for businesses? Um, marketing used to be very much about traditional media, so um, print magazines, uh, TV, uh, direct mail, all those sorts of traditional, what you call marketing. Um, <coughs> We still have uh, what we call telemarketing, you have people ringing up and asking you to buy a telephone. They're what you call, I suppose, interruption marketing. And uh, when we're time poor, uh, then they just become annoyances. So what's happened with traditional marketing is it's, um, the web has actually started to change that in a big way. Um, and I'm still astounded by the fact that uh, the numbers recently I heard was that 43% of uh, small businesses still didn't have a website. Um, so traditional marketing is still very much, I suppose, part of people's traditional way of, of looking at spending, whether it be yellow pages. I don't know whether some of you have looked at uh, or received yellow pages in the last 12 months, but um, they do very well as, book, as uh, doorstops, um, putting monitors on um, or putting back into the recycle bin. Um, and I still find people spending big dollars on yellow pages. Um, and I can't even measure the results. So the technology that's emerged in the last five to ten years um, is very easy to measure and it produces results that you actually you know what's happening. You can measure hits to a landing page. Um, so digital marketing is what's emerged in the last five to ten years but um, what happens is a lot of CEOs and senior managers have not changed their way of thinking in terms of how they market. Um, in fact, some research showed recently that 93% of all buying decisions started with an online search. And despite that, people are still sticking with traditional marketing because they're comfortable with it, they don't step outside their comfort zones. So, how else has it changed? Um, marketing used to be very local, and uh, this audience here is looking very much at trying to market overseas. Uh, the ability to leverage your message globally via a website, a blog, and, well, and also other medium like uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, all those different means enables your voice to be heard globally. A lot of people still think locally rather than globally. And what else has changed is that a lot of people have a website, they put it up, forget, walk away, and hope that it's going to sell. Um, if I asked a question, if anyone spent any money on optimising their website so they actually get found in a Google search, how many people actually spent money on optimising their website for a Google search? Okay, that's great. I would say it's about 30%. Okay, the other 70%, um, if 93% of people are actually looking to find you online and they can't find you, where are you? So that's how marketing's changed. And that's something you really need to think about carefully. Um, but spending money on optimising your website is quite often, oh gee, it's an expense. But people are trying to find you online. Thanks, Jeff. Someone mentioned the fact that uh, with Google now, the, if you go into a Google search, it will automatically pull up the locations in your home country first. Uh, so this company I was speaking to had actually set up websites in various other locations. Would you recommend that as the way around that Google situation for searching? In terms of setting up websites? Yes. Um, Google's just changed its um, algorithms in terms of search. Um, it's a project called Google Caffeine. What it actually values now is recency. Because Google's challenge is always to be relevant. So if you type in a search into Google, your actual expectation is to get a good result. Um, so if you're setting up a website uh, in Australia, um, you can actually set up other websites globally as well, whether it be in America or whether it be in the UK. Um, if you're trying to reach an American audience, quite often it's good to have a .com. Um, so Americans need to, and that's a big part of search. In fact, my Twitter audience is 40% USA. So if you're trying to reach an audience, you're trying to be as relevant as possible to them. Um, in their language, like this morning I got a message on Twitter that I'd spe spelt optimization wrong. <laughs> it was spelled with an S. 
<laughs> so in fact, when I write, I generally write with a Z because the American audience is so large. So having different websites around the world can be useful, but um, then you have to optimise each website. So it really is uh, maybe better to invest in a uh, well-optimised core website presence in the market you're targeting. Yeah. Thank you. And you talked about social media before. Uh, how do you think that might fit into an exporter's armoury of ways to market their services overseas? What social media is good at, um, whether it be Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, or a blog, um, is that enables you to get your content out there. Um, a lot of people have websites, they just put them up and hope people are going to turn up. Um, what you've got to really think about is actually getting your content on all these platforms. And one way to think of it is actually to have your website or a blog as your home base and actually to put your content out onto the other platforms so people can find it easily. You've got to put your content where people are hanging out. So if you're trying to re reach top CEOs, uh, LinkedIn, the actual demographic of LinkedIn is an uh, average income over $100,000. So you need to have a presence on LinkedIn if you're trying to reach at that level. Um, if you're trying to reach a Gen Y audience globally, uh, they'd rather watch a video than read you know, two lines of text. They'd rather slash their wrists than read two lines of text. Um, they would rather watch a five minute YouTube video. So you are need to look at the different audiences you're trying to target and then use the appropriate social media channel to actually connect with them. And you've got to think like a publisher. So you actually publish your content on your blog and then you actually will take that content and put it onto the different social media channels. Twitter's great to actually announce that content, to spread the content. Um, what we're doing today is actually taking a video. This will go to YouTube later and you actually can view it online at your leisure. So what you do is you take all the different types of content you might have. It might be a tutorial on how to do something. Put it on YouTube, let people view it. So what you're trying to do is you use the social media channels to distribute your content and amplify and leverage your presence online. Um, you'll be astonished at, if you do this correctly and efficiently, you'll be astonished at the reach you'll actually be able to achieve by doing this. Um, it really is. Um, it's a digital world. You've got to start thinking digitally. Thanks, Jeff.